My favorite virtualization software is GNS3. There are many advantages to using GNS3, and I use it all the time when I produce videos or simply practice and learn things. Some advantages of GNS3 include that it's free, open source software, there is no monthly or yearly license fees for use with GNS3. There's also no limit on the number of devices that you can support. Here are just some devices that I've got running in my GNS3 topology. GNS3 supports many, many devices. And as I've mentioned, some of them are listed in the appliance section of the GNS3 website. There is no limit on the number of devices that you can support. It's only limited by your imagination and the hardware that your device supports. In other words, you are limited by the amount of RAM and CPU that your PC can support. But now with version 2.0 of GNS3, you can run GNS3 in the cloud. So this now allows you to run the GUI on your laptop and push all the heavy computational and memory load to packet.net. So you could simply rent a server for a period of time, depending on the network size that you want to build and therefore build a very large GNS3 topologies. In addition, you are not limited to running GNS3 on a single PC. You could run multiple instances of GNS3 on different PCs and then connect them through a physical network. So you can connect GNS3 to physical devices or connect multiple GNS3 topologies together through physical switches to add scale to your topologies. So if you've got additional PCs, simply connect them together and run multiple GNS3 instances and build very large topologies. GNS3 supports multiple device types. This as an example is a Cisco 3725. So the actual hardware is being emulated here. You can insert ether switch modules into this device to get basic switching. But for proper switching, I would recommend that you use a Cisco IOS V Layer 2 image. This is a viral device. So basically, GNS3 now allows you to run any of the viral devices in your GNS3 topologies. And that includes IOS V, which provides version 15 routing capability iOS V Layer 2, which provides a lot of switching functionality, iOS XR, Nexus OS, CSR 1000 V, and ASA V. So again, don't believe what you read online or see in YouTube videos. GNS3 supports many Cisco devices, but not only Cisco devices. It also supports devices from other vendors such as Juniper, or Cumulus, or Palo Alto. So many devices are supported that I can't go through the list here. But the idea is, is that you can run multi-vendor environments. You can run GNS3 either locally or by using virtualization technologies. Dynamips devices such as a Cisco 3725 can run locally without a GNS3 VM. But some devices, such as the Cisco IOS V or Cisco IOS V Layer 2 and other appliances in the GNS3 marketplace require the use of the GNS3 VM. That's because the hardware for these devices is being emulated by QMU, and QMU doesn't run well on Windows or Mac OS. It needs to run within Linux. So if you're running either Mac OS or Windows, you need to run the GNS3 VM so that you get the QMU hardware emulation. Now a question that's often asked is, do you need to buy a VMware workstation to use GNS3? And the answer is no. You could use VirtualBox. VirtualBox, however, does not support nested virtualization. So you can't use VirtualBox with devices such as Cisco IOS V Layer 2 because again, it's using QMU hardware emulation. So we are running QMU within a virtualization technology within Windows or within Mac OS. Nested virtualization is required for these devices. If you try and run 
these devices within VirtualBox, they will run extremely slowly. So either use VMware Workstation, VMware Player, which is free, or ESXi, which is also free, but is a bare metal hypervisor. On Mac, you need to use Fusion if you want nested virtualization. If you're running Linux, you don't need the GNS3 VM. You can just run everything natively on your Linux installation. GNS3 also has a very large community of professionals that can help you. There are many dedicated individuals that contribute to the GNS3 community without any payment. So what are the disadvantages of GNS3? Probably one of the biggest disadvantages and one of the most often asked questions is where do I get iOS images? GNS3 provides a foundation or a container, if you prefer, for loading iOS images from Cisco or images from other vendors. Some vendors, such as Arista, make their EOS operating system available for free. You can use EOS within GNS3 by simply registering on their website. You don't have to pay anything. You can simply register, download their operating system and integrate it into GNS3. Cisco, however, doesn't do that. So unfortunately, due to legal requirements, neither I nor GNS3 are able to provide Cisco iOS images. You have to provide your own. This is probably the biggest stumbling block for new people wanting to use GNS3. Now, where do you get images? You can either get them from the Cisco website. So download them directly from Cisco. Or purchase a viral contract and use viral images within GNS3. Now, you can use viral images without a license authentication. You can download the viral images and integrate them with GNS3 and use them offline. Legally, you are responsible to make sure that you've got the correct licensing in place. But technically, there's nothing stopping you using viral images in GNS3. You can also get images from a physical router such as a Cisco 3725 and copy the image into GNS3. GNS3 is open source, free software. It doesn't do any license checks, doesn't make sure that you've got the correct licensing in place. It simply assumes that you've got the licensing in place because you are responsible for doing that. So that's probably the biggest disadvantage of using GNS3. Another issue that users encounter is getting GNS3 up and running. Now, I've created many videos showing you how to install, configure, and set up GNS3 from a basic to a more complex setup. So have a look on my YouTube channel for videos on how to get started or how to set up VMware ESXi or how to set up packet.net. GNS3 has two main components. You've got the GUI and you've got the GNS3 VM. In some cases, you need to use both. So that can be fairly intimidating for new users to GNS3 and I would say that complexity is a disadvantage to using GNS3. Again, if you are very new to networking, just getting started, and you find GNS3 too complex, get started by downloading and using Packet Tracer. That is an easy way to get started learning Cisco iOS. But again, doesn't help you learn other vendor software such as Arista EOS or Cumulus Linux.